There is a game that is trending, and the reason for this is because it's a big old scam. You've probably heard of it by now. It's called Greed of Man, made by TikTok creator Nick Cuser. Now, I'm no idiot when it comes to scams. I've had my fair share in the past, but when it comes to getting scammed from a video game, specifically by the developer, the issue is often difficulty telling whether or not the game is actually a scam, or just bad. The reviews might sh** on a game, but that doesn't mean it classifies as a scam. Greed of Man is the very definition of a scam, and the developer is already ducking any sort of response to it. I should point out something that I didn't think needed to be explained, but you should always be wary of anything that is made by a TikTok influencer because more often than not, they get in over their heads with something they know nothing about. Take Pink Sauce, for example. I've wanted to talk about this when I first heard about it, and despite being sick for the past few days, I was not going to let this opportunity pass to lay down my whole input on this situation. I know that there have been other YouTubers who have already talked about this already, so I'm probably not going to be saying anything original, but I'll still give it my best shot. Now, to clarify my prior statement, just because something is made by a TikTok star doesn't mean it's bound to fail. It just means you should proceed with caution as their level of fame doesn't determine the quality of what they're selling. And unfortunately, that's the case with this bastard as he's built a reputation with his audience for overhyping projects and never finishing them. Let's take a look at his first project, Tomorrow's Past, the game used to build his audience on TikTok. The building is called Emerald Estates, and in Emerald Estates, you'll be able to buy apartments and garages. This lobby area is going to be very important as it is where new players will spawn. This is where a lot of players will be introduced to the game for the first time. Initially, he planned to release this in March of 2022, but wasn't until later that year he finally admitted he didn't know what the f he was doing. He said he didn't have enough time or resources to finish the game, and so he never did. Now, you can respect it when somebody admits defeat. In fact, more often than not, it's these past failures that often lead to success for many through trial and error. But this isn't the case for Nick, as exactly two weeks later, Nick would post a new TikTok showcasing an idea for his next game. This is the Earth. Better yet, you can zoom into the Earth and you can see the different buildings, such as New York City. Now you might be thinking, well I can do this on Google Maps, that's not that interesting. But this is actually inside a game engine, which means I can make a game out of this. What if I made a game where you start out in one little building, and then you build up your own army and you expand from building to building, taking more and more territory of the city. This was the start of World of Fate, a strategy-based game with the goal of taking over the world by creating empires that dominate the map. This game would actually be released on Steam's Early Access for $10, which, unsurprisingly, failed. Like I said before, having a bad game doesn't mean it's a scam, although I do have some major regards to point out about this game. For starters, Nick was receiving far more funds from his audience, yet when you look at World of Fate, the game doesn't seem to have changed at all from when he initially announced the idea. Which begs the question, what did he do with the money? Along with that, despite releasing the game in early access, no changes have been made since the initial launch. In fact, it's still in early access to this day, seemingly abandoned by its creator. So, yeah, Nyx had two projects under his name by this point, and while there's some questions surrounding World of Fate, for the most part, his audience knew what they were getting into when purchasing the game. He never overhyped or falsely advertised it, and really the only complaint one could have in regards to the actual game is it needs work. There was really no harm done to Nick's name, until January 2nd, 2023, when he announced his next project, Greed of Man. So yesterday, I told you guys about a game idea I had where players actually created and ran the world with its own economy. And you guys really liked the idea. Now, of course, a lot of you are probably thinking, this game's way too hard for one person to make. But I think I'm up to it, as long as I get enough funding. Now, the way I'm gonna do the funding is I'm gonna use the revenue from my previous game, World of Fate, to fund this game. 
So if you want to support the project and speed up its development, make sure to go get a copy of World of Fate on Steam. Right away, this announcement contrasted his prior remark when developing Tomorrow's Past and how it was too big of a project for one person to do. He essentially started working on the same game he had previously abandoned, but pushed for more money from his audience. And by stating he would be using funds from his previous game, World of Fate, implied he would not be continuing with the game. Now, on the surface, it seems like by using profit from his first game release, he could fund Greed of Man and gain an audience for both it and World of Fate. Plus, if he's no longer going to be working on World of Fate, then he should have all the time needed to commit to Greed of Man. Except, there was one factor many overlooked. He already attempted to make two games prior, which he both abandoned. And with Greed of Man being basically an improved version of his first idea, Tomorrow's Past, there were warning signs that he could very much abandon it also. And that's exactly what happened. He's got nothing. Why is that? Oh, because he's not a real game developer. Uh, I don't after being showcased for over seven months, Greed a Man was fully released on Steam July 10th, 2023. And to call this embarrassment a game is being generous, as those who played it quickly realized there's nothing. What was hyped to be the next GTA turned out to be a slap in the face for many players as there was nothing to do once inside except explore a city that was smaller than this man's IQ. To really stress how disappointed players were after buying this game, let me show you the official trailer less than three weeks before release. of a bitch! The game consists of nothing but a ton of marketplace assets. Something any five-year-old who's played Roblox could easily replicate. I want to credit TikTok creator Evo Ferrier for this next part, but he's a game developer who's been calling out Nick for this very reason. He even recreated everything Nick has made without any of the money Nick claimed was necessary for the game. This is following up on my most recent video. Within around three hours, I have created this game, which has your building system, and is made with the same copied assets from the Unreal Marketplace. The game took me a total of three hours. This just proves that your game greed of man is not worth the $30 you claim it is. That's right, this bastard charged $30 upon release. And only because it came out during Steam's summer sale were some people able to get it for about 20. There's enough evidence to file an entire lawsuit on this man for fraud, funding, and false advertisement. If he continued to work on Greed of Man and updated regularly, then maybe he'd have a chance at redemption. But not even a week after releasing it, he announced he's done working on Greed of Man, thus abandoning another project. This guy was getting nearly 3k a month on Patreon alone to fund this game, but as Evo Ferrier pointed out, he didn't even need it in the first place. So if he never used the money and isn't planning on continuing Greed of Man, then what the hell did he do with everyone's money? I think I'm starting to understand the Greed of Man, and yet there's still more. Before you can even hop into the experience, you're required to sign up for a third-party login, which is on a website owned by Nick. So this bastard is most likely harvesting players' Steam data and selling it on top of scamming them out of money. Remember, he's not a part of any company, he's the only dev, and is a 17-year-old. It wasn't too long ago I was his age in high school. I know high schoolers. They have no remorse for their actions. The most insulting part about all this is he initially planned to release it for free. Instead, players are basically paying $30 just to have their Steam info stolen. It's admirable to say the least in regards to how this barely in the eyes of the law adult scammed hundreds of people. Reminder, this isn't a couple hundred bucks. He's been collecting funds on Patreon since his first project, Tomorrow's Past, and by the time he started working on Greed a Man, was funded nearly 3k a month. I'd estimate he's probably made a little under 35 
thousand dollars from patreon alone not including those who purchased his two games and how much he's made selling players steam data what started as a simple in-depth look at a controversial game quickly turned into a full exploitation of probably one of the biggest scammers on tiktok Hopefully Nick doesn't get away with this and maybe he'll face some real consequences. To anyone who's supporting Nick, I highly advise you stop as this guy really doesn't deserve it. But anyways, that's about all I have to say. So yeah.